New International Version. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. Somebody say met him. Amen. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. One translation says, have mercy on us. And I want to preach today and teach from the subject, I have no other option. I have no other option. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, scientists study a native tribe in South America whose people have been dying prematurely for generations upon generations. After thorough investigation, the cause of all the premature deaths was finally determined. The disease was transmitted by an insect that lived in the walls of their adobe home. This knowledge presented them with several options, Ms. Bonds. They could move to another area where such insects did not exist. They could tear down their homes and rebuild them all over again. They could use insecticide to rid their homes of the bugs, or they could continue as they have and die early. Surprisingly, these people have opted to remain as they are and do nothing about their problem. And many people behave that same way today. They know a problem exists in their life, but they opt to remain unchanged. It's not as if a solution is unavailable. It's the fact that oftentimes complacency and comfort are more desirable than healing. When we consider the reality of life, we quickly realize that nobody is going to do anything for us that we have the power to do for ourselves. I wish I would have got a great big amen right there. If there is no desire, there can be no deliverance. If there is no hunger, there can be no healing. If there is no burden, there can be no breakthrough. See, after spending three weeks in this same passage of scripture, I thought, Deacon Pam, I had seen everything that I could see. But the Holy Spirit of God told me on the other day, go back, because you missed something. I said, what did I miss? On Thursday, on Thanksgiving rather, Lord, we talked about being the one who came back to say thank you. On Thursday, on Thursday, we talked about the fact that these men were cleansed as they went to see the priest. And we made a confession that I have to keep moving. Last week, I said, Lord, last week we talked about the fact that my faith demands more. What, what else is there to talk about in these verses? And the Holy Spirit said, you need to tell them that I have no other option. See, what the Spirit of God revealed to me after I thought there was nothing left in this text, that there comes a point in this life when you have to declare like these lepers did, I have no other option. This text serves to remind us on one hand that life is unpredictable, and then to encourage us on the other hand to the fact that God helps those who are willing to help themselves. See, leprosy in the first century Palestine was worse than a life-threatening disease. Leprosy was often known as, lepers were often known as having something called living death. They were labeled as unclean by the Jews and, and their were very appearance was a warning to other people. They could not work, they could not return home, they could not come to worship post-COVID. Lepers had problems with their social life, they had problems with their money, they had problems with their relationship, they were outcasts, they had spiritual implications as a result of this leprosy that was on their lives. 
They lived alone. They were viewed as people who had a curse put on them. They were deemed social pariahs. In the Bible, the word leprosy is mentioned about 40 times depending on which translation you're looking at. And the main reason why it's mentioned so much is it gives a graphical illustration of the power of sin in the life of an individual. Now, although the lepers were seen as unclean or dirty to the Jews, God did not think about them in the same way. Somebody should have hollered right there. See, many people saw them and were scared to even be near them. But God has not been, God is not, and God never will be afraid to come near those whom the world wants to shun. I could have shouted right to myself, amen. You see, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 3, there was a leper who went to kneel down before Jesus to ask Jesus to be healed. And the Bible says that Jesus stretched out his hand and he touched the leper. When people did not want to touch anybody with leprosy, God did not and God reached out. Now, unlike Matthew who tells us that Jesus touches the le leper, Luke lets us know that a touch was really not Jesus' ultimate intention here. See, being healed by a touch puts all the emphasis back on Jesus. Uh -huh. But this text highlights for us the power of seeing in the, light, in the life of an individual. It highlights for us the power of sight. It highlights for us the power of when you see something in your life. As lepers, they not only saw their condition because they knew what their condition is. And let me pause and like remind somebody that you will never be able to address your condition unless you know what your condition is really is. Amen. That as lepers they knew what they were in. They saw their condition and they were in a terrible situation but they also not only saw their condition this night but they also saw an opportunity to change what they were in. Great day of morning. See by crying out to Jesus the implication here is that not only did they see their condition but they saw in him the opportunity to have a reversal in their lives. That's why we celebrate Advent. See, and one of the greatest barriers to overcome in all of our lives, here it is, is honest self-evaluation. If you can't be honest with yourself, amen. See, they knew what their conditions were. They knew the condition they were in. But they refused to allow what they saw about themselves to restrict them from believing that they could be more in their lives. And whenever the obstacles of our lives blind us to the possibilities for our lives, we will never move beyond where we were. They had a they had financial restrictions. They had social limitations. They had relational challenges staring them in the face. But none of that mattered to them when they saw Jesus Christ. When they saw what they were up against and they saw what they were presented with, they realized that the, that the window of their opportunity was right before them and they had no other option. You want to tap the person beside you and say, I see my window and I have no other option. Amen. See, the presence of Jesus Christ in their situation was the window of opportunity that they had been waiting on. But, but, and they could not afford to let this window close or the opportunity pass them by. They were not going to allow him to walk by them, realizing he had the power to change them and they not open up their mouth and at least see what he was going to do in response to their cry. I wish you would have a to my nigga and say, don't just sit there like a bump on a log. Open up your mouth and let him know that you need something. Amen. See, see, that's why Advent is so significant in all of our lives. 
Advent represents the window of opportunities that are found in Jesus Christ. The window of hope and the window of joy, the window of peace and the window of healing. Jesus represents the window of freedom and the window of reversal. He, Jesus is the window of opportunity that provides us an option, listen, that was once unavailable. Because before Jesus showed up where they were, they were in a pit. They were stuck. They weren't going nowhere. They had no other options. And I wonder if anybody show up today at church. Come on here now. Anybody show up today and you have found yourself in life at least one time and you had no other options. I, I can't go left because there ain't no way to go. I can't go right because there ain't no way to go. I can't do this because I don't have what I need. I was stuck like Chuck. But one day I saw Jesus and my whole world changed upside down. Amen. I saw a chance to get out and I I took the chance that God gave me. Look, prior to Jesus showing up, the, these lepers had no other options available to them. They were contagious, they were ostracized, they were maligned, and they were even humiliated. They didn't have any viable options for anything favorable happening for them because folk didn't want to deal with them. Don't act like you've been saved in church all your life. I know you done lived a little few days and you had folk who didn't want to deal with you because, look, because and, and, and this is what I love about the story, right? Can I, can I bless your name real quick? It, it's funny how they didn't have names. Uh, all they were known by was their condition. They, they weren't named Joe and Ralph and Bob. But they, they're all they were known as, as lepers. Have, have you ever been known not by your name but by your condition. <laughs> have folk ever called you, hey, that's, you know them, that's the one that, that's the one that, y'all not saying nothing now, y'all making me nervous. Amen. Amen. They, they, they were not known by their name, but they were known by their condition. And when they saw Jesus available to them, listen, in the condition they were in. That's the shout right there. Jesus didn't show up after they were cleaned up. They saw him in the condition they were in. I told you this story highlights the power of sight. They saw Jesus present and available in the condition they were in. And they believed in their hearts that something can happen to me right now. <laughs> Boy, we missed our shot right there. Because what that means is the moment, Kenan, the moment you see Jesus present and available in your life, listen, despite your condition, you are one step closer to your breakthrough. The moment you can see him available to you in the condition you find yourself in, you have a window of opportunity. And my grandma once told me, opportunities don't come around all the time. That you want to seize it when you see it, God help me. And you can't seize it unless you first see it. They saw Jesus. And they responded based upon what they saw. And I need to say it today, that if you don't see anything, you won't be able to do anything. If you can't see something, you won't have anything to go after. If all you see around you is dysfunction and despair, gloom and grief, sorrow and struggle, pessimism and pain, then you won't do anything. But if you can see possibility, despite your reality, then you will jump at the opportunity. I'll say that one again. That sounded good to me. If you can see possibility in your reality, then you might just jump at the opportunity. See, some of us can testify right through there because our lives were full of adversity. But when we saw Jesus in the midst of our reality, we jumped at the opportunity. That's why we shout. That's why we holler. That's why we worship. That's why we scream. 
That's why we cry. Not because stuff has always been good to us, but because we see the possibility of a turnaround in the midst of our condition. And I want to see if anybody showed up today and you still believe that a turnaround can happen in my life. Not because I've got all my ducks in a row, but a turnaround in my life because I see Jesus in my situation, in my, in my depression, I see Jesus. In my sorrow, I see Jesus. In my dysfunction, I see Jesus. In my loneliness, I see Jesus. In my condition, I see the master and he's able to provide me a way out. And that's why I tell myself, I ain't got no other option. I can't go to mama because she ain't got it. I can't go to grandma because she ain't here. I can't go to daddy because he ain't never been there. I ain't got no other option. I got to go where I know I'm going to find some relief. Is there anybody who showed up in church on a Sunday morning and you know the only option you have is found in Jesus Christ? I'll give you 13 seconds right there to go ahead and give God a praise on Sunday morning because your testimony is if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where in the world would I be? When I was lonely, he found me. When I was by myself, he comforted me. When I was sick, he showed up in my hospital room. When I needed a lawyer and couldn't find one, he showed up and defended my case. In my condition. And look, let me help some of y'all today. Because look, you ain't, or some of us ain't find Jesus in the church. Don't make me tell you what some of us found in that, amen. We ain't all find Jesus on no padded pew. On a Sunday morning. With our hands lifted up. And our mouth filled with praise. We ain't find him like that. Some of us found him in the crack house. Some of us found him on the unemployment line. Some of us found him in the jail cell. Some of us found him in the broken relationship. Yeah, come on here. Some of us found him at the, in the bottom of Johnny Walker Red. Y'all know what I'm talking about, amen. Some of us found him in some crazy places. But I'm so glad, Deacon Rhonda, he came to me in the condition I was in and didn't wait for me to get cleaned up before I came to him. Look, these lepers were not in a good situation. And they knew they won't. They were not in a good situation. And look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop fooling yourself. If it ain't right, you gotta own it. They were not in a good, and they knew they weren't in a good situation. But Jesus shows up. And they said to themselves, this just might be my yeah. They saw Jesus and they may have said to themselves, the, the chance to recover is right before us. The chance to get back into society is right before us. The chance for a healthy new beginning is right before us. The chance for social mobility is right before us. And they recognized that what was before them was better than what was previously before them. And they said, we might as well take a chance because we don't have no other option here. They saw what they were in and then they said, the opportunity that's before us is now going to move us to do something. And that's what Jesus Christ does. Jesus is going to provoke you to do something about your own life. They saw him and they said, master, yo, master, yeah, we talking to you, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And I wish I had somebody in church today who can testify right through there that when you saw him, it, he provoked you to do something. It's subtle in the storyline. It said they saw him and then they cried out to him. See, their cry was based upon what they saw. Not only in themselves, but what they saw in Jesus. They saw something in him that was worth crying out for. They saw something in him that made them believe that this could be a turnaround in my life. They asked him for mercy. Somebody holler, mercy. They said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. His sheer presence 
provoke them to do something. And that's what your faith in God ought to do. It ought to provoke you to do something. Whenever he shows up in your life, he ought to provoke you to do something different about your life. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Which suggests that they were asking Jesus, listen, to not let them get what they were destined to get. As lepers, they were destined to have continued isolation. As lepers, they were destined to have continued humiliation. As lepers, they were destined to have continued disfavor. Because leprosy, once again, was viewed as a curse from God for a person's sin. And as long as they remained leprous, they would continue to be viewed as a curse. And I know I'm talking about five of y'all today. I don't know where you are, but I know I'm talking to you. Because folk did not think highly of you. Folk did not view you highly. They thought something was wrong with you. Nobody wanted to be around you. Nobody wanted to deal with you. Your family had a bad name. There was a bad name attached to who you were growing up. Folk didn't want to have no parts of you. But look at you now. You have outlived their prognostication about your life. Not because you had it all together. But because you saw a window of opportunity that was found in Jesus. And you said if he could make their life better, he surely can make my life better. And I don't know who I'm preaching to today. But is there anybody in here today who can testify if he can make their life better, he surely can make my life better. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They asked him for mercy, which implies that they saw in Jesus not an ending to their life, but they saw in Jesus a reversal to their story. And I wonder, did anybody show up today? And you still can look at that baby in the manger. You still can look at Mary's baby. You still can look at the lily of the valley. You can still can look at the rose of Sharon. You still can look at the king of kings. You still can look at the lamb. You still can look at Jesus and you can see a reversal in your life. Is there anybody here today who still believes he's got the power to turn my stuff around? Anybody here believe he's still got the power to change my life? Come on, don't play with me now. But did anybody show up today and you still have holding on to the fact that if God can do anything, God can do everything. See, this was their moment in time. One that was not guaranteed to them. And they made the most of the moment. And I want to encourage somebody listening today. Because you might not get this moment next week. You might be saying, well, I'll wait till I get myself together. But the beauty of the fact is, Jesus shows up when your stuff ain't all together. He shows up when your stuff is torn from the frame. He shows up when your mind is crazy. He shows up when you are delusional. He shows up when you are discouraged. He shows up when you are afraid. He shows up when you are fearful. He shows up when you got more money going out than you got coming in. He shows up when everybody has left your life. He showed up in their moment. In their moment of despair. He showed up in their moment of fear. He showed up in the moment of their apprehension. He showed up in the moment when life seemed to be dark and over. He showed up. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I feel like preaching. I don't know who you are today, but if you can look at your neighbor real quick and say, neighbor, I know something about them lepers because I was in a condition. I was in a situation. Folks didn't call me by my name, but they called me by what I was in. And one day, I got a glimpse of Jesus. One day, a ray of sunshine showed up in my life. One day, Hope sprung up in my spirit. One day, joy came in my heart. One day, I had some faith I didn't have before. And I saw a possibility in the face of my futility. They looked at Jesus and they said, Yo, y'all, there goes a chance right there. There goes a chance right there. I may not be able to run fast enough to get to where he is, but I sure got some lungs and I'm going to holler. I wish I I had somebody who showed up in church today, and you know you got some lungs, you want to go ahead and holler, Jesus, 
Master, have mercy on me. They saw what they were in. They saw what they were up against. They saw what they battled. They saw what they had to overcome. And when they saw Jesus collectively and individually, they said, I ain't got no other choice. I don't have any other choice. Here it is. If I'm going to die, it won't be because I didn't try to live. If I'm going to fail, it won't be because I didn't try to move. If I'm going to stay stuck, it won't be because I didn't try to get up from here. They saw Jesus and they made a move of faith. And that's what Jesus will always do. He will make you step out on faith. I wish I had some believers today who can testify. Hey, preacher, you're talking about me now. Because I was up against a wall. Stuck between a rock and a hard place. Didn't know how I was going to make it. Didn't know how life was going to turn out. But when I saw him, somehow I stepped towards him. And he gave me the power to keep on coming. You want to shake your own stuff and say, keep on coming. These lepers, they saw in Jesus a brand new opportunity. One they didn't have the day before. One they didn't have last week. One they didn't have the month before. They saw Jesus show up where they were. And they probably looked at each other every morning. And one of them may have said, well, I've been wanting to feel accepted. Another one may have said, well, I've got a desire to make a contribution. A third one may have said, yo, I've been yearning to fulfill some goals. The fourth one may have said, well, I've been planning on getting my degree. Another one may have said, I'm hoping to get my health back in check. Another one may have said, I've been praying for another chance. Another one may have said, I've been dreaming of overcoming this stigma. Another one looked around and said, well, I've been working on my resume. Another one said, I've been praying about serving more and giving more. And another one may have said, well, I got all that beat up. I've been dreaming about being more. And I wonder if anybody show up today and you've been dreaming about being more in your life. They saw in Jesus the chance of a lifetime. And with the limited options that were before them, they said, I don't have no other choice. But God told me to tell somebody who showed up on Sunday morning that don't look at what's not right in your life because you always have another option of Available to you. These brothers saw an opportunity and they cried out in the direction of that opportunity. They saw Jesus and they cried out to Jesus. They said, Jesus, have mercy on us. We got to go now. I think I might be finished with this with this text. They said, Jesus, have mercy on us. He said, go ahead on and show yourself to the priest. They had no other option before them. And Jesus responds to them by saying, go on and show yourself to the priest. In other words, I'm not going to do it for you, but I will put you on the path to recovery in your life. I'm not going to do it for you, but I will point you in the direction you got to go. I won't do it for you because I see that now you want to live. Is there anybody here who wants more for your life? Anybody here who wants greater for your life? Anybody here who desires to go higher, a desire to achieve more, desire to see more? The master told me to tell you, go on in the direction of where you need to go. Go on downtown. Go on where you gotta go. He tells them, since you are able to see me present in your situation, I will put you on the road to redemption. And that's what it's all about. That's why we holler. That's why we shout. That's why we declare that the Lord is good and worthy to be praised. Because the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Anybody here ever been down, but the master helped you get up? Anybody here ever been lonely, and the master helped you find some hope? Anybody here ever been by yourself, and Jesus showed up and stuck to you closer than a brother? Anybody here ever had no money in your pocket, but somehow he kept on being Jehovah Jireh? You want to grab somebody near you and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, you've been in that condition long enough. You've been stuck there 
long enough for this whole year is almost passed you by and I refuse to let you stay in 2021 the way you've been. If I gotta pull you, I'm gonna pull you. If we got to crawl, we gonna crawl. If we got to hop, we gonna hop because we have no other option. Won't he do it? Huh? Won't he do it? Huh? Won't he answer your cry? Won't he answer your prayer? Won't he show up in your closet? Won't he show up in your mess? You want to grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, the God I serve is always on time. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Won't he do it? Won't he fix it? Won't he heal you? Won't he save you? Won't he deliver you? Won't he give you hope? Thank you. 